someone I follow on Twitter. Uh, they threw this up, or actually, it was uh, it was Greg from from remember IGN Greg, who hasn't oh, been yeah. with that company for years now, but it's still how most people know him. Yeah, old Greg Miller. Yeah, so I he's he slapped this together, and I was like, oh, that's that's pretty neat. I'm gonna. I'm going to, I mean, I can't say steal it because he actually was like, hey, everyone use this template and see what you get yourselves. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Beep, beep. Oh, that was my phone on vibrate sitting next to the microphone. <laughs> Oops. So, yeah, I, I agree. Just at a quick glance, some of these are going to be pretty easy to get rid of. Just, so I think the way it's set up. Oh, geez, it's too close. It's set up in a like. Everyone's got their own little pool, and then they're ranked one to sixteen on their likelihood of winning that pool. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't think the rank. I think the rank only matters when setting up the brackets. After that, I don't think the rank number really matters. Uh, let's see if I get this thing working properly. Oh, no, that's a bad, that's a bad brush. There we go. That's better. It's not a, okay, it's not a bad brush. It's just wasn't going to work for what I needed it. Uh, all right. So the first game is Erica versus Octodad Dadliest Catch. Uh, I know Erica was free on PlayStation Plus. Currently, I know nothing about that game, nor have I even heard of it. Uh, I know I wanted to play it at some point because I'd written it down, but then I'd forgotten everything about it. It's an FMV game, which, eh, I mean, they can be all right, but I think they're kind of weird, personally. I'd rather a video, like, you know, animated characters. Yeah, yeah. And I still have not played Octodad 2, but given its predecessor, I'm, I'm just going to give it to Octodad, honestly. Cause yeah. That, and that's at least a video game as opposed to a, a playable movie. Yeah. Agreed. Dead. Uh, so, and then immediately, no offense to Octodad, but... Uh, God of War versus Octodad. It's pretty... Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you play God of War? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. God of War is very good. It is? God of War. Beautiful. Yep, War has two R's. Sure, why not? Uh, okay, Until Dawn versus Firewall Zero Hour, which I think is an interesting matchup because they're both by the same company. I have no opinion have not played either, don't know what they are. Well, you don't like horror games, uh, but Until Dawn, I still think, is probably that studio's best game. And Firewall Zero Hour is a PSVR exclusive shooter. Or wait, no, is that Bravo Team? Are they the same game? They might be the same game. You're asking the wrong person there. I have no idea. I'm going to put Until Dawn, because that's a very good horror game. Sure. Uh, Wipeout Omega Collection or Everybody's Golf VR. Uh, I, I hear good things about those Everybody Golf games. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Wipeout because I don't, I don't play sports games, regardless of what they are. Well, it isn't like a cartoonier golf game, but I was also going to go with Wipeout only because it being a VR game... Most people probably haven't touched it. Uh, yeah. I have not. I have a VR headset, but it is not the uh, PlayStation one. Uh, the Ratchet and Clank remake versus Amplitude, which was one of my favorite rhythm games in the last couple years. No idea. Ratchet and Clank. I played that. It was good. Um, that's my vote. 
Amplitude gets bonus points for introducing me to the band uh, Brain Pop, but I can't really credit the game for that because the band exists outside of them. So uh, I'm going to agree and give it to Ratchet. Also, I don't know how I thought talking about this was going to take two hours. It's probably going to take like 40 minutes. That. <laughs> what are you going to do for a tiebreaker if we can't agree on something? I've well, got a, I've got a feeling that's not going to... Because I, I don't know, I'll fly halfway across the country and we'll fist fight. Uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn versus Sakura Wars, and I actually... I think Sakura Wars might be the only game I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm going to say we'll both agree that Horizon Zero Dawn is probably the, the winner there. I, yeah, I think it's fair to say it's probably one of the best. HCT. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima versus Everett has gone to the Rapture. Now, I have played both of these within the last six months. I have played neither, but I'm going to get Ghost of Tsushima and not the other game. So, oh, well, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is one of those, like, quote-unquote, walking simulators where you just walk and cutscenes occasionally happen. Well, that sounds boring. But Ghost of Tsushima is, like, the most fun I've had in a long time. So, Ghost. And this time, it doesn't stand for Game of Thrones. No, it doesn't. People need to think of new titles, because too many things share the same acronym, like God of War, Gears of War. I don't think anyone's going to be confused with Ghost of Tsushima and Game of Thrones, because Game of Thrones has ended. Yeah. I still have all... I think I'm just going to delete that off my hard drive, because I, I, I really don't see myself re-watching that series. The ending is just such a disappointment. I don't even see myself finishing that series. I got, I got to, like, season five, and I was like, I'm good. Say what? I got to, like, the fifth season, and I, I, was, I was done. Oh, you didn't even finish it. Nope. <laughs> okay, The Last Guardian versus The Forest. Uh, Car Carly, you, you played The Last Guardian, right? Yeah. Did you like oh, it? I loved it. Okay. That's Carl the one with the Griffin thing, right? Or yeah. Have... I don't know what The Forest is. I've never heard of that. Uh, the Forest I actually just recently bought on PC. It's one of those survival games. Um, it, I don't like that type of game personally, but they're fun with friends, but out of the three people that I'm talking to, or the three counting myself, only one of us has played uh, <laughs> The Last Guardian, and it sounds like it's better, so... Um, I'm just going to give it to that one, given how much hype that is. Well, I mean, yeah, t Team Ico is pretty beloved, so I'll, I'll assume it's a quality game. Uh, Knack versus Days Gone. Well, I'm, I'm a, so, this is the only one I've thought about, uh, because I've only played one of these, and Carl, I don't think you've played either. No. So, but based on what I know, I would have given it to Knack, because I do like the, the art direction of Knack. Yeah, so my idea is Days Gone, it's like an open world zombie game, something that, like, there's a billion zombie games and a billion open world games. As far as PlayStation is concerned, it doesn't have many mascot platformers, so I, I kind of lean towards Knack. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it immediately goes against Dreams, which is less a video game and more a creator's tool, but damn if I haven't been impressed with some of the stuff people have put out. So, so I don't, yeah. I don't know how you measure something measure. like that. Yeah, I was going to say, that's more so software um, creations than it is a game in itself. So I'd say based on whether or not this is a video game, I would probably give it to Knack because that's actually a game in itself. I think I have to agree because Knack does, or not Knack, sorry, Dreams does have like a, a story mode, which is like all created within Engine, which is kind of cool. Because it gives you an idea of everything you can do. But if I'm being honest, it's not that good. <laughs> the creator's tool of Dreams, fantastic. The actual game, eh. Messed with it? Uh, yeah, I have. I've actually put a bit of time into uh, Dreams. 
It's like I find myself <sighs> with those types of games. Like I'll I'll play it for like maybe a couple of weeks, and then I'm like, okay, I'm bored of this. I want something that I can actually play and not make stuff. It kind of it's kind of the same for me, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's like that's what happened with me and like, Mario Maker. Like I play it for a week or two, and then I'm like, okay. I want to play something where I don't have to make things. I want to just play something. Uh, I will give a shout out. I played a, a horror game called, uh, I think it was called Sinfeld Chronicles. It was a horror game based on Seinfeld. That sounds terrible. It was shockingly good. Uh, and if that was going against Knack, I'd probably actually put that above it. But I, I think, yeah, dreams creation tool. So, base dreams on user created games. Yeah. So for that, it's it's neck. All right, we get to go into the the second chunk. Oh, that first one just put Uncharted straight through. <laughs> I mean, you're you're probably gonna be right, because. Uh, Drive Club or Fat Princess, it doesn't matter. It almost doesn't matter which one wins. Uh, the no, answer is Fat Princess. But uh, easily, yeah, Un Uncharted 4 beats that. Man, you cannot tell that I have... I don't know if you're looking at my screen, Carl, when I'm t like writing on this Photoshop thing. But I'm actually using a stylus, <laughs> not the mouse, and boy, does my writing not show it. Uh, Gravity Rush 2 versus Fire Pro Wrestling World. Uh, Fire Pro Wrestling is a sprite-based wrestling game. I'm, I'm going Gravity Rush 2. I that game is a, is a good time. Bad camera issues, but aside from that, it's a good time. I'll, uh, I'll concede with that. I haven't played either, so no opinion on my end. Uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy versus Dragon Quest Heroes 2. Uh, well, Heroes is just one of those um, kind of same thing as Dynasty Wars. What do you, what do you call those games? Muso. At least that's the term yeah. I've always heard. Yeah, it's one of those, right? Um, I, I played a demo, and it's like, those games are, I think all of those types of games is like, they're fine. I've never been blown away, like even Hyrule Warriors. It's fine. Maybe good, but not amazing. They're fine for a little while, and then it just gets boring and repetitive. So, yeah, definitely giving that to Uncharted again. <laughs> it's almost like those have a ton of money behind them. Oh. Uh, Spider-Man versus Iron Man VR. Yeah. Well, again, being biased on that, I haven't played Iron Man VR, but I'm going to give it to Spider-Man, because that game was fucking amazing. I, I meant, I have the demo sitting on my PlayStation. I actually haven't touched it yet, but... Again, any VR exclusive, I think, gets the automatic, like, kind of deduction. If it's a... It's not an automatic lose, but it, it hurts it because most people don't have one. Spoderman. Spoderman. You mean Piderman. Oh, how could I forget? <laughs> Piderman and Batman. <laughs> Uh, Neo versus Fish of the North Star Lost Paradise. Uh, Neo, basically Dark Souls, and Fish of the North Star is basically Yakuza. So they're both games that are just doing what other games do worse. I, yeah. Again, haven't played either, so I have no opinion. Uh, I'd probably give it to Neo. Neo? How do you say it? I don't know. I, I'm, going, I'm going Fish of the North Star, but I know... It's basically whichever one I feel more strongly about, you'll go, okay, because you don't have an opinion on this one, really. Whatever. Uh, Neo is, I mean, it's kind of cool, but I prefer Dark Souls. I know some people prefer Neo to Dark Souls. But Fish of the North Star is basically a really good Yakuza game, finally set in a different city, and it's got over-the-top anime moves, so I'm giving it Fish of the North Star. I haven't played any of the Yakuza games. Oh, man. They're great. Yeah. 
Yeah, people keep telling me that. Is I've never gotten around to it. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I can't recommend them enough. They're a they're a good old time. Uh, Resogun versus Street Fighter Five. I don't know what Resogun is, but I'm probably gonna pick that because unless they're both fighting games, uh, <laughs> they are not. Uh, so from diehard Street Fighter fans, I hear that Five is so so. Uh, in Resogun, super good. It's by, it's by Housemark Games. It was a it was a launch title for the PS4, and it was free, so everyone can play it. What is it? What it's kind like, of? it's kind of like an arcade voxel-based shooter. I don't really know how to. It's a it's a two D like shoot 'em up like uh, like Galaxian or those types of games. Sort of a bullet hell type thing. Yeah, but you work in like. The levels are completely like spherical, almost. It's it's neat. I liked it. Yeah, considering I have no love for fighting games, I'll I'll, I'll give it to that one. All right, Judgment versus Detroit Become Human. Judgment is uh, oh Yakuza spinoff. Again, uh, no no opinion. Well, I've only played one of these, so I have to lean towards Detroit Become Human. Uh, I've seen that one, and I know kind of what it is. I'm le leaning towards Detroit. Uh, I would give it to that purely based on production value. Detroit looked very nice. I didn't play it, but I saw videos of it, and it looked, looked really good. It, it does look it, good. But that is one of those just kind of uh, basically quick time events. Game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple times where, like, you're investigating a crime scene or something, and that stuff's pretty cool, but it's mostly quick time events. Sounds uh, like you not want to play. Judgment is, I mean, it's just as goofy as a Yakuza game, but I'm going to dock it a lot of points for it being a different game, but it reuses the entire city from the previous Yakuza game. It's the exact same environment. They changed nothing. Kind of. So that's pretty lame, in my opinion. Sure. Detroit. All right. Bound, which is a ballet platformer, versus Order 1886. Well, I know which one that I'm picking. Bound uh, is a what kind of platformer? A ballet-based platformer. Ballet base. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I'll give that one to the Order 1886 as well, because I don't know what that is. <laughs> the Order is uh, a game that I've been dying to see a sequel of that is never going to happen. But it got a lot of fair criticism for it. The game is like 10 hours long, and I think 7 hours is, is, is cutscenes. Oh. <laughs> But, uh, so I'll give it to the order, but it goes against Bloodborne, and Bloodborne is one of my favorite games uh, ever, so it's an easy, easy pick for me. Yeah, sure. I haven't played either again, so. Good. Slip on over here. All right, Shenmue 3, which is everyone considers a bad Shenmue game, versus Knack 2, which is a significant improvement over the first game. I give it to Knack 2. For sure. But then, unfortunately, it goes against a Naughty Dog game. So... Yeah, whereas I've just started <laughs> Last of Us 2, I would give it to that. Uh... Yeah, you're not going to hear me arguing that one too much. Kind of hard to beat a, a, a Naughty Dog game. I have a feeling it's going to be Naughty Dog against Naughty Dog by the time we get to the end. It's it's entirely possible. Uh, Blood and Truth versus King of Fighters 14. Um, fighting game versus a PSVR exclusive. That's a toughie. I don't know. I don't really care. That one's going to get eliminated anyway. 
<laughs> it's up against the Last of Us. It's true. Uh, <laughs> King of Fighters, whatever. It's it's the discount Street Fighter in my opinion. But Blood and Truth is one of the best PSVR games I've played. So I'm I'm giving it to that one. Blood. Truth. Pyre versus Gran Turismo Sport. Well, I think we both equally dislike racing games. I don't know what Pyre is either, but sure, we'll give it to that. You ever, you ever played Bastion? Nope. Really? Really. I'm actually surprised to hear that. It seems like the type of thing you would have played. Uh, I know the name Bastion, but I'm forgetting what it is. Is that a, a, just a 2E platformer? Uh, it's more of like action adventure game. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Pyre anyway. Gran Turismo Sport. From what I remember, people didn't like that one compared to Gran Turismo Five. So I'm I'm just gonna give it to that one. Yeah. Uh, ba baseball versus Infamous. Gee, could it be Infamous? Because sports games are generally terrible. I mean, from what I understand, those baseball games are pretty well made. Um, like, I don't think there's been a bad one, but it's still just a baseball game. Well, yeah. As I said, they're kind of a dime a dozen. That's why whenever a console goes out of circulation, the only thing left in the used bins is crappy sports games. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh... Res Infinite versus Matterfall. I am not... I played Res Infinite. I have never heard of either of those. All right. Easy win to Res. Uh, Yakuza 6, Song of Life versus the Player Room VR. Well, one of them is kind of a tech demo, and one of them is a video game. Uh, I'm going to say Yakuza is the actual game, correct? Yes. We'll go with that. And also, that was the first time in the series. So Yakuza 6 is the seventh Yakuza game, not counting the the zombie spinoff. It's the first time they used a different location. Wow. Took them a while. If you play through those games, Carl, you're going to be going to get used to the same city. Wait. Was it just Tokyo the whole time? Uh, no, it's not even Tokyo. It's a, it's a neighborhood. It's, it's like... Oh, it's just a prefecture of Tokyo? It's like five square blocks. Yeah, that sounds a little repetitive. Uh, Death Stranding versus Riggs. This is a tough one for me because these are both games I don't like. What the hell is Riggs? Riggs is, uh, is by Gorilla Cambridge. It was a PSVR shooter where... The way the controllers were set up, it required you to use the left stick, the right stick, and your head. So it was using a shooter. It was like they made a sh first-person shooter that you used three analog sticks, kind of. Oh, God, that sounds terrible. I, I did not enjoy it. I mean, Death Stranding's controls are equally awkward. From <laughs> what I'm, so uh, I'm not really sure which one is the worst game I have to give it to Death Stranding for me personally because Riggs didn't have a ton of hype and then came out and I think unfortunately the studio went bankrupt and is closed. Uh, Death uh, Stranding had a ton of hype and then, and then people immediately didn't care about it. It was just so-so from everything I heard. So, but yeah, we'll give it to Death. Death. Uh, far point versus drawn to death. That's easy. That's far point because drawn to death is one of the worst third person shooters I've ever played. Oh, yeah. Never heard of either of them. Uh, the one like nice oh, thing great. I'll say about drawn to death is it has a fantastic art style. It's like a uh, high school's sketch pad where it's all like dumb doodles. Oh. But outside of that, it plays really badly. Uh, and then it goes against Astrobot Rescue Mission, which is my favorite game I played all of last year. So, what is that? It's a uh, it's that uh, I got you to play it at my house once. The little robot PSVR platformer. Oh yeah, that was fun. And is that just on PSVR or is that on other VR? It, it is exclusive to PSVR. 
Oh, that's too bad. Uh, the sequel for PS5, from my understanding, is coming free and is not a VR exclusive, so that's good. Uh, that's You versus Drive Club VR. That's You is a mobile phone game, so I'm going to... I'm actually going to say leaning towards giving it to Drive Club. I can't even see the stream video is all pixelated up there. Oh, yeah, it says I'm, it says I'm dropping a lot of frames, which is a weird thing to say when it's a static Photoshop document. Yeah, well, not even just that. The top half of the picture is, like, blocks. Oh, weird. <laughs> the uh, compression algorithm is breaking down. Probably some of that is based off, yeah, me streaming at two places at once. But I'm I'm just gonna give it quickly to a driving game, and then a driving game versus Persona Five. Carl, did you play Persona Five? I did not. You should. It's very good. I I mean I've seen uh, it looks really cool, but I just been un occupied by other games. It's you know. It's in the backlog somewhere, but I don't know if I'll ever get to it. <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely, I get, I get that. There's some games that I want to get to, and it's just, it's just never gonna happen. Well, yeah, it's because uh, a lot of games like that always get replaced by something else you want to play more. <laughs> it's like one of those games where it's like, yeah, I kind of want to play that, but only if I can't find anything else to play. Like, I've got uh, that uh, Trials of Mana remake is one of those games for me. It's like, I keep seeing it on sale lately, but I'm like, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, that's actually, that and the the other one, Trials, it's Trials of Mana and Trials of something? Se no, Secrets of Mana and Trials of Mana, the, those are the two. Yeah, the Secret of Mana remake was a little less... Uh, well done, shall we say. Um, but yeah, I, I've had my eye on both of those, and I just, I'll probably never get to either of them. Well, that's the thing, because like, I have played both the original SNES versions of those games, so I'm like, do I really, <laughs> really play it? Alienation, I which is a... Uh, so, sorry to cut you off there, Carl. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it's just a Alienation versus Infamous again, which I had to go back and check. I was like, didn't I already do Infamous? But it was the DLC, but it was standalone, so it counted as a different game. Uh, I'm just going to give it to Infamous. Alienation That's is a top. Kind of weird putting DLC for the same game on this list. Well, it's, it's standalone, so you could buy it without owning the mm -hmm. other game. So it is technically its own game. Yeah, it's like the Torna thing for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They sold as a separate cartridge, which I never bothered with. <laughs> what What even is that? I've never even heard of it. Xenoblade Chronicles 2? Well, no, I heard of that game, but the whatever oh. DLC thing you're talking about. Uh, it's basically like kind of a prequel backstory. Uh, but it focuses on the group... Okay. They're, in, they're in the main game, but uh, yeah, I, 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 by the time that came out, I had already finished the main game. I'm like, ah, I spent enough time on that already. I don't really want to put any more into it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Especially because they were putting out DLC for that game for like 18 months after it released. That is way too long for me to still care. Yeah, that's also true. It's got to be within, like, the first... Even a year's... Like, a year's a reasonable amount of time to make DLC, but, I mean, if I think a year out, I, I'm not thinking about that game anymore. It depends on how much it is. If, it, like, if it's just a little thing, like, uh, what they did with Shadow of the Tomb Raider was fine, because, like, every month after the game released for about a year, they put out, like, a new bonus tomb or something. Hmm. Like, maybe an additional hour 
to two hours of content, which is fine. You know, just revisit that game once for a few hours a month, and then you're like, okay, good, done. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. But if they're, like, releasing a full, like, 30 to 40 hour campaign thing, like, a year after the game comes out, I, I just, I can't be bothered to go back mm -hmm. to that. <laughs> yeah. At that point, you're like, I'd rather put that amount of time into something new. Exactly. All right, Neo 2 versus Concrete Genie. Uh, versus what? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I had my eye on Concrete Genie. I'll probably, again, another game I'll probably never get to. Uh, but I don't hear anyone talk about it. I've at least heard people talk about Neo 2, so I'm willing to give it the victory just based off the fact that I've heard people mention it. I did not know there was a Neo 2. But uh, I'll, I'll give it to that. <laughs> I don't know what the other thing is either. Uh, Killzone Shadowfall versus Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is an easy victory for me. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Final Fantasy VII Remake on that as well. This, uh, I'm uh, a little biased against shooters. So. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fine shooter, but the Final Fantasy Remake was very good, so... Tetris Effect versus Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Uh, question, who still cares about Tetris? A shocking amount of people. I, I don't know if you've seen Tetris Effect, but it's it's very... It's the prettiest version of Tetris, which, granted, it's not saying much. It is still blocks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it to Until Dawn. I don't know what that game is either, but um, I'm sure it's probably more interesting than Tetris. Uh, Until Dawn is a horror-themed roller coaster game where you just ride a roller coaster. <laughs> that also sounds stupid. It's it's not great. Well, what do you say? I'm going to give it to Tetris Effect because it... Uh, well, I, on Rush of Blood's VR, and it's okay VR at best, so I'm just going to give it to Tetris. T tried and true. You can't, can't screw Tetris up. Okay, well, uh, it's not going to get very far anyhow, so... Nope, definitely not. Uh, Dragon Quest Heroes, the first one, versus Nino Kuni 2. Um, as much as I didn't like Nino Kuni 2 as much as the first game, I, I think it's probably still better than a Buso game, so I'm going to give it to Kuni. I, I can't say I liked the first one better or worse, because I've never played the second one, but I sat and watched Carly play through the entire second one. It looks very good. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Nino Kuni 2. It's, I mean, it, it is still a good game. Oh, yeah. Uh... It had a lot of different things, and uh, just... I mean, it definitely looks better. It's obviously the original one on PS3. Some uh, some low poly models in there. Every <laughs> Orcs and must work. die unchained versus everybody's golf. That golf game again? Oh, this is the non VR version. Oh. Which really shouldn't count as a separate game. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I don't know what the other thing is, but I'll give it to the orcs. It's a uh, it's like a third person tower defense game. I played the first one, but I'll agree. And then Shadow of the Colo I mean, I'm just gonna skip the play in. Knowledge is power versus predator. It's predator. Shadow of the Colossus versus Predator, it, it's Shadow of the Colossus. Agreed. <laughs> Sock. All right. Now, uh, here's where it gets more difficult. Slightly. All right, unfortunately, God, I really like Until Dawn. God of War is a better game than Until Dawn, that's for damn sure. Oh, yes, God of War. It'll, it'll get more interesting when... We reached games that we've both played. 
Wipeout versus Ratchet. Ratchet. Oh, yeah. Ratch. Ryzen Zero Dawn versus Ghost of Tsushima. Now, that's a toughie, because those are kind of the same game. There was a lot of things I liked about Horizon Zero Dawn, and there was a lot of things that I didn't like about it as well. So what are things you don't like about it? And I can tell you if Ghost does them or not. So we can try to figure out. Uh, well, the Horizon Zero Dawn, um, for me, came at a time where I had just finished playing Breath of the Wild, so that was kind of a rough game to compare it to. Mm-hmm. Spike, I mean, it, like, it had prettier visuals, but uh, the world felt less alive to me in Horizon because there was no dynamic on the uh, the grass or anything. Mm. It was all very static. Uh, and also, in Horizon Zero Dawn, the conversation system was... Animation. Honestly, there was just no reason to, to have it. Well, when you were talking to NPCs, it felt like they were very dead-eyed. Uh, I can honestly say Ghost doesn't do much better in that regard. It does a little better. The acting is much better, I'll say, even from the NPCs. But the animation is not uh, what you'd hope to see, that's for sure. I think I gave it to ghosts. So I like swords, and I like the, uh, the the Japanese setting a little more. I think I'm going to have to agree. As much as I, I like Horizon, uh, I lost what you said there. As as, as much as I really like Horizon, it, I mean it's still a very good game, but I am cur currently. I'll pick Ghosts, and I'll admit there's a little bias towards that because I'm currently playing it, so I still have the like baby eyes for that game. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I haven't played it yet, but I've seen a lot of videos, and it looks gorgeous. Oh, it's fantastic! I I'm gonna be dropping like a 200 picture album online when I when I finish playing. You're another one of these uh, photo mode. Oh, oh, I've been taking a lot of pictures. See, I never bother doing that because I'm usually too busy and enjoying the game. <laughs> Some games I don't bother, like Last of Us, I didn't touch it. But to me, you know, like Last of Us is like straightforward narrative game, so I just want to play the game. But in a big open world, a lot of times I'm like, damn, that looks nice. Snap a picture real quick and carry on. Yeah, there's only been one game so far that I've really felt like doing that. I think it was uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That's a pretty nice looking game on PC, especially in 4K. Yeah, I could believe that. There's some some spots in the most recent, not the most recent, in, in Rise of the Tomb Raider that I'm like, you know, if I was looking at this in 2016 when it came out, I'd probably be like pretty wowed by <laughs> some things. And, uh, playing it with HDR on as well. Unfortunately, you can't, uh, at least on PC, you don't seem to be able to take screenshots with the HDR effect. I'm not really sure how you can. It's kind of very dependent on the person viewing it, I guess. Yeah. If you don't have that function on your display, it's not going to work. Uh, the Last Guardian versus Knack. I actually. Uh, yeah, this is another one I really don't have an opinion on. I have not played either, so. I'll give it to The Last Guardian because I know people like that game. And Knack is okay at best. Yeah, Knack <laughs> looks goofy, and it was a very first gen PS4 game. Like, Knack 2 is in every way a better game, but even that, like, Knack 2 is like, uh, like maybe a 7 out of 10. 
Knack is like a six. Woo. I usually don't even play games if they score lower than a seven. <laughs> I mean, I used to think that was silly, but like where there's so many games coming out now, I almost totally understand. Yeah. Now that being said, there's a couple game like there's a Godzilla game for the PS4 that's not on this list, so that's pretty rude. But I also don't think it's exclusive either. That game got like a four, and I love that game. Which game was that? Godzilla. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't even touch that. Licensed games are usually garbage. You're not wrong, and this one is no different. But the, the review I heard was, if you're a fan of Godzilla, this game is an 8 out of 10. If you don't like Godzilla, it's probably a 3. <laughs> yeah, it would be a 3 for me, sir. Uncharted vs. Gravity Rush. Well, I, li I do like my anime trash. I also have a crush on Nathan Drake, so... Yeah, yeah. you know, I just realized uh, he did a voice in uh, Transformers Prime. He's he's a busy man, that Nolan North. Yeah. I didn't know, because uh, the first time I had watched that series, I had not played Uncharted. Oh. And I was kind of skimming through it the other day. I don't know if you do this, but every now and then, like, I've got a buttload of movies on my uh, hard drive. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, I just, like, pop open a folder and say, like, oh, I haven't looked at this in a while. I just kind of skim through a couple episodes. <laughs> and, like, that character popped up and was like, Hey, it's Nathan Drake. Because uh, <laughs> you know Nolan North does the same voice in everything. That, that was the that was the worst. The, the character Nathan Drake was the best and worst thing for his career because it really blew him up. But then everyone was like, "Just do that voice for everything." Um, yeah, I haven't. I mean, didn't you do a a voice in uh, one of the Arkham games, or was that the other guy, Troy? Uh, well, they, they both did. Troy did the Joker in the oh, Batman okay. Origins. He was also the Penguin in the city. Nolan North was the Penguin. Uh, okay. See, he did do a voice that didn't sound like Nate Drake. Yeah, the, the, the one I'll always give him the most credit for was, I know earlier to me you said you hadn't played the first Last of Us in a while, but he plays David, the villain, in the first game. And I genuinely did not know it was him until the credits rolled. Oh, jeez, I don't even remember the first game that well to know what that character was. I, I replayed it less than a year ago, so it's still pretty fresh in my mind. But Was he the guy that was chasing Ellie? Yeah. Uh, the, the bearded dude, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah I vaguely remember that scene. Uncharted Lost Legacy versus Spider-Man. Well, I do love Uncharted Lost Legacy, but Spider-Man is goddamn fantastic. Ooh, that's a tough one. I do love both of those games. Uh, I feel like I would give that to Uncharted personally because I'm much more likely to replay that than I am Spider-Man because Spider-Man being an open-world game is such a huge time sink. Damn. Whereas Uncharted... You can play through in, you know, a day or two. You know, I was leaning towards Spider-Man, but I can't argue. That's a damn fine point. Because, yeah, I, I'm probably not going to replay Spider-Man. I probably will replay Uncharted Lost Legacy at some point. Yeah. Like I said, Spider-Man is really good, but... Uh... I tend to not replay open world games just because of how much time they take to complete. Yeah, you know what? I, I I think I can agree that these games are almost on par of quality, but one just has more replay value. Yeah. All right, back back into the stuff that we're not super familiar with. Fist of the North Star versus Rezogun. I'm just going to skip over all of our talk and just say it's Rezogun. Sure, whatever. And then Detroit Become Human versus Bloodborne. Well, Detroit, while pretty, is mostly quick time events, and Bloodborne is the best 
Dark Souls game. So, it's Bloodborne. Blood. Woo! Last of Us 2 versus Blood and Truth. That's easy. I, I mean, I think you're kind of right. It's just like any Naughty Dog game. Just, yep, next one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Blue 2. Pyre versus Infamous. At this uh, point, I'm actually leaning towards Pyre because Infamous is just the DLC. I've already forgotten what Pyre is again. <laughs> it's like a fantasy sports game, kind of. I don't know. It's got cool art. It's going to lose the next round anyway. It absolutely will. <laughs> uh, Res Infamous versus Yakuza. Uh, the answer is Yakuza. And Death Stranding versus Astrobot. Well, it's Astrobot, baby. I love that guy. Sure. I have not played Death Stranding, so I can that. Persona 5 versus the actual infamous. Uh, it, it's it's shocker. It's Persona 5. It's the maybe the best. It's the one of the best RPGs I've ever played and the best turn-based RPG I've ever played. Again, I haven't played either, so... Neo 2, FF7, FF7... Yep. Tetris, Nino Kuni 2. Well, I think at this point you go, okay, it is just Tetris, and I think you have to give it to Nino Kuni. Yeah. <laughs> Tetris probably has so much replay value. Shadow of the Colossus versus Orcs Must Die. It's clearly Shadow of the Colossus. I imagine most people's lists of this look pretty similar, but I'd be curious to see. I might go around after and look. I'd say it's probably 50-50 with Lost Legacy and Spider-Man. That's true. That's a, that's a big... That one could go either way. <laughs> God of War versus Ratchet and Clank? Well, it, I gotta give it to God of War. Yeah, as much as I like Ratchet and Clank, and I think I would probably replay that before I play God of War again... God of War is definitely the, uh, the, the more impressive game. It's more impressive. The, the Basically, everything about it, I would say, it does better. And Ratchet & Clank suffers from being the movie tie-in. Yeah, a little bit. God of War. The Last Guardian versus Ghost. Well, it's, it's going to be Ghost. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say that. Oh, man. You know what? At this point, I'm just going to fill in the next one. So, God of War versus Ghost of Tsushima. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say... I'm going to say God of War. Uh, well... I think it is not God of War was a really... Impressive and well-made game, but I, I, I kind of dock at points just because of how much an insufferable grump Kratos is, <laughs> and I just don't love his character in that game. He's kind of an asshole. Okay, yeah, if you want to get into the weeds, yeah, Kratos has, like, maybe six moments in that entire game where you're like, oh, I could respect that person. Yeah, I... I like, it's a, a really well-made game, and I just, I, I got a dock at points, because I didn't enjoy it as much when the character you're playing as is just a dick the whole game. Uh, and I have zero desire to replay that. Uh, Ghost looks like a more enjoyable experience to me. I, I mean, it, uh, it, it has been, and... It's hard for me to think back, but I will say, um, I I really liked the world of uh, God of War better because it, it is like a fantasy world. I mean, yeah, it's based off North mythology, where Ghost is like it, it's just Japan. And now, granted, Japan is gorgeous, but well, like, I think we need a tiebreaker because. Uh... My vote is for Ghost. 
I think I'm really just talking around in circles. I think you bring up a fair point because like what once you get to like this level of like both, you know, multi-million dollar triple A exclusives, like of course they are both well-made products. So you have to start like getting into weird things. And while I don't know Jin, the main character from Ghost, that well yet, because I actually haven't gotten that far on the plot, I don't hate him. Yeah. So, well, yeah, just, the whole time I was playing God of War, I just felt so bad for his son. He's just like, boy, go do this. He just gets bullied for 50 hours. It's your own son. You could at least call him by his name. Yeah. I mean, that being said, I would be very interested in playing a sequel. Yeah. I mean, I would play a sequel to the game, but I would not replay that one. That was a, a one-time experience for me. I don't, I don't have any desire to play it again. All right. The, the fight of the two Uncharted's. Uncharted Lost Legacy versus Uncharted 4, that, to me, this is the easy one. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it 4. Because... The character of Nathan Drake is just, I don't know, he's got a lot more charisma, and he's, I don't know, just more entertaining than Chloe and the Dean, where I think... Yeah, and ultimately 4 is a more, I don't know, complete package, in my opinion. Uh, Lost Legacy was intended to be DLC for Uncharted 4, but it kind of spiraled out yeah. of control. Yeah, it kind of turned into something. But, yeah, Nathan Drake at that point had four games running of, like, I mean, you can't hate the guy. Plus, I, I would say I dock Legacy points just a little bit for because it's built on exactly the same engine. True. But that'd be, like, just one point off. Uh, Resogun, uh, Bloodborne, it's, it's, it's Bloodborne. And now here is where things get interesting. <laughs> for me, anyway, because I know you're pretty one-sided for this one. Mm -hmm. Uncharted 4 is, without a doubt, a very good video game. However, it's not even the best Uncharted, in my opinion. Uh, I think, for me, it's a bit of a tie between 2 and 4. I, I still think 2 takes it for me. Like, 4 is not bad, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Having this uh, main thing against games that are brutally difficult, I would easily give it to Uncharted for that reason alone. Again, I am biased, having not played any of the Dark Souls, really, aside from that first one way back when I was still at Atlantica there. Yeah, that was uh, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't even finish it. I just got lost, and I got frustrated and stopped. Well, I'm, I mean, I, I think at this point I'm going to try and take bias out of it a little bit, mostly because I really like both of them. Um... If I were to recommend a video game to someone who wanted to play, I'd probably recommend them Uncharted. Because you don't actually need the, the other three games to enjoy four, I don't think. I think you kind of get the setup without them. Yeah, more or less. I mean, you're, you're missing some of the backstory between Sully, Nate, and Elena, but aside from that... Uh, where Bloodborne, while I think is has a credibly unique setting, like there's no other like gothic horror game that I can think of. People, if I just gave that game to someone, they're not going to get very far before they go like, yeah, man, I just couldn't beat like the first zone or the first boss. Uh, so as, as much as it pains a bit of my soul... It doesn't hurt that much because I also really like Uncharted. <laughs> okay, Last of Us 2 versus Pyre. Easy. Don't 
only played one of them. Yakuza versus Astrobot. Well, those Yakuza games are 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 real good, but I personally am going to give it to Astrobot. Uh, I do not really care because it's not going to beat Last of Us Two anyway. I was going to say, like, it, it's, well, and also, like, even if you're kind of indifferent to Astrobot, it's like, you don't know enough about Yakuza to be like, uh, oh, wait, yeah. Astrobot versus Last of Us 2. I mean, Last of Us. I think it's fair for me to say that Astrobot is probably the best mascot platformer on PlayStation. One of the best mascot platformers in recent years. Across any platform, in my opinion. But Last of Us 2, regardless of what people think of the writing, is an incredibly well-made video game. On this system, sure. Uh, <laughs> would uh, not hold a candle to Mario Odyssey, though, in my opinion. And, I mean, that's fair, but that's why I said one of the best. Because obviously you're not going to beat the king in his own game. Uh, I think I would be crazy to say Astro Bond is better than Mario. But it's better than Super Lucky's Tale. Uh, yeah. I, I, I know that game, but I have not played it. <laughs> I've heard very mixed things about it. Uh, because there are apparently different versions of the same game. Well, there's... Yeah. I, I don't understand that either. Like the PC version of Super Lucky's Tale is different than the PlayStation version or the, uh, the Switch version. I can't remember which one it is, but I know that they are like both games have the same name, but they are completely different. That's that's, that's weird. That's bad marketing. Yeah, so uh, at least that's what I I think I've heard. Uh, I only I only know one person who's played uh, Super Lucky's Tale. They said it was good, but I don't. Good and is it the best platformer ever are two very different things. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, Persona 5 versus FF7. Uh, having played neither, but for me, based on which one I actually intend to play, uh, I, I'm going to have to give it to, to Final Fantasy 7. I don't know when, but I do want to play that one. So, both of these are... Two of the only like lengthy RPG games that I actually replayed because I replayed Persona Five and I replayed FF Seven, which is saying something because that game only just came out in like March. Yeah. <laughs> when did Persona Five come out? Wasn't it like November or October or something like that? Of like two years ago. Oh, yeah, it's been a while. Ah. Uh, it was based on soundtrack, I'd give it to Persona 5. <laughs> well, see, it's weird, because I, I feel like these games are, like, pretty equal. It's like, if you're talking about stylistically and music and all that stuff, I'd probably go towards Persona. If you go towards, like, gameplay, probably go towards Final Fantasy. Characters in their own class, uh, where Final Fantasy VII is much more realistic and has, uh, you know... A lot more history behind it and stuff, but Persona series definitely has style in their favor. I I, th I think I'm gonna give it to Final Fantasy as well because they did, in my opinion, the impossible, which is they they somehow reinvented the wheel. Mm -hmm. They they took something that was deemed sacred and they somehow made it better, <laughs> but also worse because it's only part of a game. But still. Yeah, I, I've seen the article saying, oh, they're, they're already planning on getting out the second part as fast as they can, which is good and bad at the same time. <laughs> it's just like, don't rush it, guys. Well, I, I think what I heard is what they want to do is to deliver shorter pieces quicker. Uh, I, I hope they'll charge less if you're getting less content. Yeah, if, if we're going from, like, FF7... I don't remember how long it took me, but for, I'll just say 50 hours for sake. If we get, like, a 20-hour experience every year, 
or every two years, I, yeah, I don't want full price then, because then getting the entire story of FF7 is going to cost like $400. Yeah, see, I'm kind of like on the fence about maybe just waiting for the whole thing. But uh, at the same time, if it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get it all at once, that's that's not ideal either. The uh, Without spoiling anything, I would say it's one you want to follow because I think from what I've seen, well, not what I've seen, because I've seen everything from the first game. I think we're going to start deviating from it's going to start becoming its own thing very quickly. Oh, I mean, they're going to take it in a much different direction than the original game? Yeah, I think so. They might not, but I think so. It seems kind of counterintuitive being considered a remake, though, doesn't it? Well, my... I'm under the, in, the impression that FF7 Remake is not a remake, it's a sequel. It is a sequel to Final Fantasy VII. I would say it's a reimagining more than a sequel. The same. There are things in that game that you, if, if you knew, you might agree that the game could be a sequel. Um, I mean, yeah, the jury's still out to launch on that because I need another part or two, maybe. <laughs> but... It's very good. I, I would I would honestly just say if you have time, just jump in on the first one because, got it, it. The world might end before that whole game gets finished. Yeah. Well, that'd be unfortunate. I don't want to be alive when the world ends. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd rather be gone though before that. Uh, yeah, I, I was probably gonna wait till it gets an inevitable PS5 incarnation. Yeah, because that definitely will happen. They'll get it'll get a PS5 re-release uh, right before the second, like a year before Part Two comes out or something. So, gonna do Part Two on PS4 as well, you think? No, <laughs> that's gonna piss a lot of people off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it sort of on that note, it's like. Spider-Man Miles Morales is 100% a PS4 game, but they're making it a PS5 exclusive. And it's kind of the same deal as Final Fantasy VII in that regard, I think. When you say it's a PS4 game, just because of the visuals you've seen so far? I, given that it's only been two years, yeah. and uh, the fact that the game runs at 4K60... It's not a PS5 game. To me, that is a, a last a current gen game running on next gen hardware. That's a fair point. That's Sucker Punch as well, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, Insomniac. Everyone thought it was gonna be Sucker Punch because they make the superhero games, but no, it was Insomniac. But yeah. Right. Insomniac got a lot on their plate right now, because they're doing that and the new Ratchet Clank game. Mm-hmm. They're going to be busy for a while. Well, a and an actual Spider-Man 2, because they were very clear that they're like, while Miles is a game, it's not Spider-Man 2. Mm. Yeah, because in this universe, Peter Parker is not dead. <laughs> yeah. Unlike the movie. <laughs> uh, Nino Kuni 2... Versus Shadow of the Colossus. Did you ever play that remake of Shadow of the Colossus? I did. I played both of those ones. That's... We might be at the only one where I have not played either and you have played both. This might be the only one. Yeah, but you have played the original Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, I, I did play the original back on, like, PS2. Oh. Aside from being prettier, it's basically the same game. tough one. Because, like, Shadow of the Colossus is a, a, a very much fan favorite, but uh, to me it's really not much of a game. 
it's kind of just find the Colossus, beat the Colossus. Well, a, a lot of people kind of consider that game the the beginning of the movement of video games can be art, which I don't know if I disagree with, because that game is clearly more... I, I don't know, it's... Th there is something to that game. It, it was kind of standout from when it released from everything else that was coming out? Uh, yeah, I, I think for me that game is... I think it was only so impressive at the time was because it originally came out on PS2, and... There's not a lot of games on that in that era that had uh, enemies and environments in that scope, mm. just the sheer size of them. And then I re everybody was like, "Oh, it's so impressive!" Like at the time, I was living with a roommate, and he's like, "Oh yeah, man, PS2 is so much better than GameCube." And I was like, "It's it's really not. <laughs> GameCube has more powerful hardware than the PS2. <laughs> like it could have easily run this game." Uh, perhaps it might have had to be on two discs, but uh, because the GameCube had those stupid little tiny ones, yeah, like, easily could have ran it. Actually, uh, uh, totally like I, not a tangent from that. You know what's super weird to me? So uh, I assume you got Last of Us two digitally. Yeah. Okay, so the physical game comes on two discs. Oh wow! Really? Um, what's heard of on PS four? <laughs> I'm right. Well, Final Fantasy VII also came on two discs. But what's weird to me is Ghost of Tsushima, while not, like, the character models kind of take a step down because it's an open-world game versus Last of Us is a little more linear. Yep. To me... Yeah. But Ghost is only one disc. Hmm. Well, I think the main thing is that Ghost is one huge environment, whereas... Last of Us 2 is very many uh, custom detailed environments. There's that's that's like, true. That is, that is true. Shitload of foliage in some of those forested areas and stuff. There's also a lot of stuff they probably just could have taken out of that game, but didn't. Yeah. If there's one thing I would say about it so far in terms of the visuals, I would just say like maybe tone down the film grain just a little. Mm -hmm. I find that it's it's a bit strong. The, the, the image is very noisy. But, I mean, uh... I might have noticed that more than you do on my TV. It's probably. 4K. But, uh, I do find that the film grain is just a tad strong for my taste. Uh, actually, to pause the Last of Us discussion, only because we're going to get to the Last of Us again really quick. So, would you say Nino Toon... Nino Toonie? Yes, I would. I think I'd say that over the channel. Nino Tooney. Uh, and then that versus FF7, so, I mean, somehow we hit two JRPGs. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give 7 the benefit of the doubt here. Having not played it yet, I only played the demo, and it, it uh, seemed like a much more impressive game to me. I'm also going to give it to FF7, because while it's a remake, it somehow was like... If you've played FF7, this is a new game for you. And if you've never played FF7, this is a new game for you. Yeah. And Nino Kuni 2 also has all docket points for multiple people preferred the kind of collect monsters mechanic of the first game. And then losing that, a lot of people were not happy. I mean, I didn't really care too much about the uh, sort of the Pokemon aspect of the first game, but. Uh... I just found in general the, the first game seemed to have more production value because it was, you know, done in part with Studio Ghibli. Yeah. yeah. It had the full uh, 2D animated cutscenes. Not granted, there were not many of them, but uh, it also I would give the first game uh, way more points for the soundtrack. It had much better music than the second game. I can agree with that. At least from what I've heard. Um, and Final Fantasy, speaking of soundtrack, it's got some damn fine music in that game. Uh, all right, I actually can't fit this all on one screen. Uh, actually, wait, I could zoom out. You can zoom out a little more than that. I can read it. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of forgot about zooming out being an option. 
Uh, so, Ghost of Tsushima versus Uncharted 4. Well, having not played Ghost yet, I can't really make a definitive decision on that, but I would give it, probably give it to Uncharted 4 for production value, uh, because Naughty Dog sure fucking knows their shit. They do. They definitely do. I, I think... <laughs> What I said earlier of Uncharted 4 probably being the more approachable game is still accurate. It's a very, like, yeah. baby's first video game. Th th those games are not complicated at all to play. Wow, yeah, if you play it on the easiest setting, it's cakewalk. Well, I mean, they can be hard, but I mean, ultimately, it's point, shoot, punch. It's not complicated. Yeah, yeah the, the battle is very forgiving. Unless you're being stupid and ignoring stealth completely. That doesn't go too well in some of the fights. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. Um, it's hard for me not to be biased still for Ghost because I'm currently playing it, but. I, I mean, yeah, Un Uncharted 4 is a perfect end for me, hopefully, to that franchise. Uh, yeah, and also for the same reason we gave it to Uncharted over uh, God of War. Basically, just... I know Ghost is going to be a fun game, but because it's open world, there's that whole replayability aspect, which I'm, I'm going to lean towards Uncharted because I will probably not want to replay Ghosts. Yeah. I, for me, go like the best way I can describe Ghost for, for me personally is I didn't have a Switch or a Wii U when Breath of the Wild came out. But how everyone talked about that game is how I think I feel with this game. Uh, it, it is sort of magical, but it made me cry. So, one of the very few open world games that I actually have had the desire to play more than once. But <laughs> to me, I guess it's a little unfair because it's Zelda, and that's like that's that's my weakness. I mean, I I guess I'd be curious to see your opinion on Tsushima, seeing as like to me that's what it feels like. It feels like my Breath of the Wild moment. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'm going to like it. I will probably be getting to that once I finish Last of Us 2 and you know, Kuni. Which, given how fast I kind of burn through games, will probably be in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's probably just in time for me to start work again. <laughs> so I'll be a little slower getting through that one. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to say Uncharted. It, it's, it's the more polished game. Ghost has, like, some nitpicky stuff with the the camera can get kind of yeah. screw up a couple times. Like the digital foundry reviews I saw, they said the camera was a little finicky during fights, and uh, apparently the stealth AI is not good. No, but I don't think Uncharted stealth AI is very good either. It's like if you're not, as long as you're not standing directly in front of them, they just don't see you. Yeah. Um, I I think. Theoretically, I, a sequel to Ghost could be a better game than Uncharted 4, but it's like, this is their first open-world game. There's, like, some kinks they could iron out, and it could be damn near perfect, but I, I think as far as the more polished thing, it, yeah, it's it's Uncharted 4. Probably. All right, FF7, Last of Us. Well, now this is interesting because both these games have controversy behind them. <laughs> oh yeah, the controversy behind Seven. Uh, Seven has some of the worst textures I've ever seen. Oh yes, that you showed me that. <laughs> uh, now they only once did it actually detract from my experience. Um, oh, we're not really basing this purely on visuals. No. Uh, 
Yeah. This is hard for me because I haven't played 7, aside from the demo. I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards The Last of Us. Final Fantasy is like super fun. The slowdowns during combat is super cool. But uh, anyone who watched me play can attest how much I have gushed over like tiny details in The Last of Us, down to like the gore mechanics or like. I liked that little uh, PlayStation Three Naughty Dog Easter egg in there. I can't remember what house it was in. It was one of the first. Oh, well, Ellie has, uh, like, the Jack and Daxter collection in her uh, her little house. Well, maybe it was Ellie's house. Well, there's uh, there, there's a couple of references in that game. I miss... I'm replaying The Last of Us 2 right now, actually. And, um... Yeah, see, I, I found a house that had a PlayStation 3, uh, Uncharted... Basically all the Naughty Dog games. <laughs> it had Uncharted collection... Uh, Jack collection, and what was the last one? Probably something. Was it Jack X Combat Racing? I hope I so. Know. Anywho, uh, yeah, we'll give it to uh, Last of Us. All right. Well, as expected, it's Naughty Dog versus Naughty Dog. What a surprise. Yeah. Um, this is a tough one because these are both current gen games. I mean, Last of Us 2 probably looks a little better because it's more towards the end of the console generation, but. For sure. Um, I think we might end up giving it to Uncharted again because of the whole accessibility thing. Plus, I don't. I I kind of hate zombies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, because, yeah, they're not zombies in the traditional sense, but they're they're just zombies. But uh, so. Purposes. <sighs> I think, yeah, Uncharted, way more approachable. I would say even though it's the fourth game, you could probably start at it and not be too lost because they... Yeah, we already, we already went into this conversation. Well, yeah, but comparing it to the... I, I would say The Last of Us 2 has more video game to it. It's it's less cutscenes. Yes, but that one is also a lot more dependent on knowing what happened in the first game, too. That is, that is true. Uh, I, I think I am just talking in circles again. I, I think I kind of agree that the approachability of you could just give this to like your mom, and she could play Uncharted probably just fine. Well, not mine. Well, maybe not yours. Probably not mine either. But my parents are like, you give them a video game, and they're like, how do you start it? You could give it to someone's mom, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, my parents, uh, they don't do 3D games. Give them a controller with a joystick, they're like, oh. <laughs> I, I had the pleasure of seeing Carly's dad play uh, a video game for the first time. I, I think ever? Was yeah. It? What? Yeah, ever, and he played Crash Team Racing with us. Uh, went pretty terribly, if I'm being honest. Uh, he, he tried his hardest, I'll, I'll give him that, but... It, it was it's pretty rough. Yeah, my parents, uh, they just play terrible mobile games. Well, probably surprising no one that I know. There, there's your winner. Oh, yeah, there. That's how it Yeah, I, I might actually use this format when doing my like personal games games of the year and movies of the year because I always do those um, standard tree well I actually do this on my own like I when I'm picking out my like favorite movies and favorite games I literally write them all down on a little piece of paper cut them up throw them in a bag pull them out and make my own tournament and I just do it 
to myself. I never cared what was my favorite of something enough to bother doing anything like that. I don't know why I do it. I like that game. I like that game. I like that movie. I like all of those movies. I don't care which one I like the most. No, and like ultimately, like, look, Uncharted 4 won, but I, most of these games that got past the first round, I think are all pretty damn good, assuming they're ones I've actually played. There's a couple who just got gimme victories. There's a, there's a good few in there that I have not played that got through the first round. <laughs> but, like, the top... Maybe even the, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Like, the top 16 are all, like, damn fine. Oh, yeah. Goes a little downhill after that. But uh, yeah, th th thanks. Thanks for doing this, Carl, on such such short notice. Yeah, that's fine. I, I wouldn't have been really doing anything other than just playing Last of Us otherwise. I I'm honestly surprised you weren't just playing it while we were recording, because I wouldn't have cared. But I, I guess you'd probably want to hear the game. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that makes sense. I would not be able to see the tree if I was using the same screen. Also true. Uh, well, uh, all right. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna end this.